What's up, people? It's your boy Levelhead back with another video. And this video will be a response video to the latest Active Gamer Life podcast hosted by the one and only um, Active Gamer Life, aka Red Knight, featuring two other colleagues of mine, Mr. T and Terminator Juice. Now, it was two other people in this podcast that I'm not, I don't have a rapport with, so I won't add them into this response. These are just two colleagues of mine, people that I call friends friends in this youtube community um i've been on active gamer life podcast many times even back when uh s4y was on there um i've been on terminated juice podcast a few times uh terminated juice has been on my podcast once or twice um uh, active game life has been on my podcast a whole bunch of times uh and mr t have been on my podcast a few times as well so these are not individuals that I haven't had personal conversations with about Nintendo, laughing, sharing our agreements and disagreements on the mic, on the podcast, and behind the scenes. So I have no trepidation about making this video, but I do understand that I can't control how they might respond to this video, but it is what it is. I'm still going to make this video because I feel like it's something that needs to be dialogue to talk about. Now, of course, everybody knows that tomorrow, November the 2nd, will be the first Nintendo Direct in a long time. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, the community is making videos, sharing their thoughts and the expectations and predictions via YouTube. And it's to be expected. But I was listening to you guys' uh, podcast today, and it was a good podcast, but I found myself disagreeing with a particular portion of it where y'all was talking about how the consumer the nintendo fan or this nintendo community should tamper or or lower their expectations so that they don't set themselves up for disappointment now i understand the logic i'm not saying that but i'm starting to wonder why do we keep why do we keep making this stance Instead of, at some point, saying it's time for Nintendo to meet expectations. See, it's always seemingly, the finger is always pointed at the consumer. Hey, man, you want too much. Hey, man, you was looking for too much. You shouldn't have been expecting that. When has Nintendo ever lived up to that? Well, should they not live up to it? That's my question. I'm not saying every Nintendo Direct should be one where we expect them, like, like Red Knight said, to knock the ball out the park, so to speak. But this particular Nintendo Direct, with all the stuff that transpired prior to this Nintendo Direct, would make would, would, would seemingly make this be a Nintendo Direct when Nintendo needs to deliver. See, this ain't a typical Nintendo Direct. Is not coming behind typical cir circumstances. You fumble the ball royally at the digital event. And the thing about it is I was listening to the podcast and it's like, you, you know, Red Knight said the smart um, fans knew how to handle that. But I recall being on the podcast with you guys and we all was dumbfounded we all was dismayed. We all was semi-disappointed and upset. No, we might have didn't lose our marbles, so to speak, but I don't think anybody really lost their marbles. I just think people was fed up with, with being let down all the time. You know what I'm saying? Are, are more likely to be let down than to not be let down. We, we all were upset about Federation Force. Yes, I know that now, you know, Mr. T, not Mr. T, but Terminator Juice has found the way to found, find something to like about the game. I, I haven't changed my position. I don't care about Federation Force. But at that point in time, none of us cared about Federation Force. None of us, we wasn't even satisfied with Star Fox. All of us was having, go back and listen to that podcast. We all had the same take. Not only us, the whole community, almost 99.99% of this uh, Nintendo community across YouTube and across <laughs> the uh, all the 10 million Wii U owners and 3DS owners 
all was upset about what Nintendo did in that digital event. That was five months ago, people. Then, since then, not only does the president Iwata pass, which was sad, after that, you, you announced that Star Fox is delayed to next year. So, what is the Nintendo fan supposed to feel for this year? Okay, Xenoblade is coming. The Xenoblade looks like an epic game if you're into RPGs. But if RPGs ain't something that floats your boat, what are you looking for? Mario Tennis? At some point, my expectations, y'all expectations, and every other person's expectations, whatever, no matter the level, long as it don't go into a realm where it ain't possible and I don't see anybody going to that place, Nintendo needs to stand front and center and address and, 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 and quiet the storm with their fan base. That is Nintendo's responsibility. It's not our responsibility to constantly tamper and lower our expectations to not be disappointed. At some point, our expectations should be where it is and Nintendo should meet it. That's my opinion. And I, I, I'm asking why don't we ever take that stance? It's not like, and I've said this many times before, folks, all of you guys, it's not like we didn't buy this piece of hardware. We spent our money based on the ideas and what Nintendo said they were going to do. Let's go back to E3 2011. Was it not Nintendo on the stage talking about we want you? The whole name of the Wii U was a pun on not just we, the casuals, but you, the core. Because the core audience or the core gamers or hardcore, so to speak, gamers didn't feel like the Wii was for them. And they felt isolated and they felt cut off and left behind with the Wii. So Nintendo said the Wii U is for you. Who, the core gamer? What did they do? They showed us a demo of a high-res bird flying through a a very nice looking, high tech, high poly count demonstration wheel showing off graphics, right? It's 2011. This is Nintendo showing off something that you would typically see at a Microsoft or Sony's press conference. Yes, they did that. Then they showed us what Zelda would look like on a next gen or a, a HD system. How did Zelda look? It didn't look shabby, I tell you that. It looked extremely good. And it got everybody, you had the, the folks over at Microsoft and Sony saying Nintendo can't do that, that system ain't capable of that. It had everyone talking. That was Nintendo. What else did they do? They talked about the gamepad and how the gamepad would change the game. It would bring the core gamers and give them an experience that they have never experienced before. This is Nintendo. These are all the expectations that Nintendo is setting themselves. They didn't stop there, folks. They brought third party. We talk about Nintendo don't need third party. No, they don't need it to survive, but they need it to thrive. And they understand this as well. That's why they had third party on the stage to get who? You, the you in the Wii U. You, the core gamer. You, the hardcore gamer. That's who they were talking to. So they brought Ubisoft on stage, they bought EA on stage, we had Killer Freaks, we had uh, Recon, whatever that was, we had a montage of all these third party games, Darksiders and, and, and Mass Effect, which, you know, yeah, they were old games, but Nintendo was trying to appeal to you, the core gamer. This is all the expectations that Nintendo set themselves. So, hindsight where did Nintendo take advantage of their own idea which was the gamepad there are third party games that utilize the gamepad more so than Nintendo did unless you just want to look at off, off TV play 
but it was more expected of the gamepad than off TV play. Right? Third party. This was an expectation that Nintendo made you think was going to happen. You might say, well, if you know anything about the history of Nintendo, it don't matter what the history says. It does matter what Nintendo is saying right now and what they were saying at that time. And at that time, they were saying that third party would be there. And for some Nintendo fans and for some people who bought this hardware, that was important. And for me, I will make this personal. I'm looking for my Zelda my Metroid Prime and my core Mario type of experience. Then get none of that over this system. So at this point, coming to the end of the Wii U and them not willing to talk about the NX and them delaying some of the most important games that we was waiting on to next year and leaving one of them in limbo to where it will be. Them talking about that a Pikmin 4 is finished it's, there's a lot that Nintendo needs to deliver on. So to me, it's the finger should not be pointed at the consumer. The for, or pointed at the Nintendo fan base. The finger should be pointed directly at Nintendo. It's time for Nintendo to at some point in the lifespan of this Wii U to deliver beyond what we as core fans might say is okay. Yeah, they gave us Splatoon. Yes, they gave us Mario Kart. Yes, they gave us Smash Bros. Yes, they gave us 3D World. Yes, they gave us Wonderful 101. These are great games. But they really didn't push 101. We got Bayonetta 2. And it took them a while to push that. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but everyone is not going to get excited about um, Kirby or, or Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze or our captain told we might we might be satisfied with that but i'm telling you right now most nintendo fans and the majority of nintendo fans might not be satisfied with that the sales is proven that the wii u sales is proven that that people want more are in it and are expecting more the reason our expectations are being are are reason we're taking the standpoint of coming in with a lowered or tampered expectations is because Nintendo has created a pattern of not meeting expectations or not delivering like they should. So we have been trained to have low expectations. I don't see this nowhere else. I don't see a person walking into a restaurant and expecting low expectations from the food they're about to get. They want the food to resemble what the advertisements say. I want my fries hot, I want my burger fresh, and I want my soda filled, and I want my soda to not be flat. These are expectations that the store themselves set that I expect. Nintendo set certain standards that they said they were gonna try to do, and I think all of us have the right to expect them. Yeah, we give them chances, we give them passes, yes, we, we overlook things, yes, we temper our um, expectations sometimes to give them time to find a footing, but we have done all that in the past. And just like you say, it's foolish to expect anything different. I say it's foolish to continue to have that same narrative. At some point, we have to expect Nintendo to deliver on their end, not just skate by and do quick fixes to, to appease us for a moment while we wait on the big meal. I don't want, I don't go to McDonald's to buy value burgers all the time. And in my opinion, in some cases, Nintendo has been giving us um, value menu games that are great, don't get me wrong, but they're not the core experiences people bought the Wii U for and people who haven't bought the Wii U are waiting for the Wii U to give. So we got to be fair, man. We got to be balanced. So that's my question. Why is it so easy to point the finger at the community? But rarely i'm not gonna say y'all don't we have but we don't do it near enough nintendo needs to deliver either on the wii u or nintendo needs to deliver with the nx they because the wii u as polarizing as it is it ain't much else it could do because nintendo themselves has put it in a compromising position by announcing the nx when they did so but towards the end of this system, 
for all of us, for me, for you, and, and you know, Terminator Juice, for Red Knight, for Mr. T, for Levelhead, for the John Shaws, the Lives, the whoever else you want to name, it is Nintendo's responsibility to, at some point in this Nintendo Wii U lifespan, to deliver on the goods that everyone came into the system expecting. We have accepted it. We have lowered our expectations too many times in the past to continue to lower our expectations. This is a pattern that I think should be broke and we should hold Nintendo accountable and expect more. And if we approach the NX the same way we've been approaching the Wii U and the Nintendo see that, we won't get better, we'll get the same. And again, a fool does the same thing expecting different results. And sometimes we as a community gotta expect more from Nintendo. I ain't saying that's with every Nintendo Direct, every digital event, but with this particular Nintendo Direct, I'm not expecting Nintendo to throw out the world for us to, on tomorrow, but I am expecting Nintendo to lay out a plan and show us what they're gonna be the future or set us up for the future and explain what they're gonna be doing for the, the uh, rest of this Wii U lifespan. I expect that to happen, because like y'all said, this is probably the last Nintendo Direct featuring the Wii U for the most part. So they gotta do something big with this Nintendo Direct. Or it's pointless, that's my opinion. So with that being said, leave your thoughts in the comment section. All you guys make your re response to me, however you wanna do that. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Hopefully you guys listen to me and, and, and take what I'm saying for how I'm saying it. But if you want to go the other route and take it a whole nother place, hey, that's your prerogative. And, and, and I can respond to that as well. But hopefully it don't come to nothing like that. But this, and hopefully I can be featured on AGL's podcast and Terminator Juice podcast. And I, of course, I don't have no problem with disagreeing with nobody on Live and Levels podcast. So y'all always welcome there. But I think this narrative and this stance, and I always trying to save people crying and focusing on that, rather than to focus on Nintendo delivering the goods, needs to change. Bust this bubble. We need to, all of us, I think somewhere in my bubble I'm popped. I'm not, I, we gotta bust this bubble and get out the bubble and see the perspective of everybody that's looking on at this situation and respect the other man's take as well as we have our own take. But we could dialogue on these takes and come to some type of realization, you know what I'm saying, or a eureka moment. I haven't had that eureka moment for me, and the eureka moment is, it's time for Nintendo to deliver. We've, we've been faithful, we've been loyal, it's time for Nintendo to deliver on their end. And that's my opinion, and this has been long enough. Let me know what y'all think, leave y'all responses or comments in the comment section. This is Levelhead signing out, deuces.